Hey, welcome back. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the how to texture the fabric surfaces uh, for like the elevators and the uh, rudder. Uh, before I do that, in Substance Painter though, here in Blender, I want to move my pieces back into position just so it makes it easier for us to look at the model. And if you remember, I move them out by just moving them by you know like even units of like one or two, so they're easy to snap back. So I hit G Z and negative one. I'm guaranteed that you know my rudder is going to my elevator goes back where it's supposed to be. You know G Z negative one, and then I hit Shift R push it back down, we turn screen cast keys on. So yeah, you can use shift R to repeat the last command. So if I do GY1 and then shift R, just eventually snap it back into position. This one goes here and then GZ1 back into position. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly do this. All right, our plane's back together. I can sleep better at night. Now it's looking better. All right, the next step is to add the fabric material here in Substance Painter. And if we look at some of our reference material, you can see there's some bumps here. And what it really is, is this is a fabric that's stretched over a frame that's then uh, sewn onto it, and then there's tape on top to secure the stitching, and then it's doped to make it smooth and shiny. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add kind of a base fabric texture to it. It's very subtle. That's gonna change the reflectivity between the two surfaces. And then I wanna create the bump map for that stitching and tape. So first thing to do is to create a folder to contain all this, and we'll call this elevators. And inside that, I'm going to create a fill. And you can see that that fill layer puts you know some kind of material over the entire model, but we don't want that. We only want it on the elevator. So here at the folder level, I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a black mask. And that black mask we're going to use is going to basically hide that entire fill layer. So now we're just seeing the underlying material again. So now what I wanna do is I wanna tell Substance Painter that this area, just the controls, just the elevator is to be unmasked. So to do that, if I hit the three on the key, or the four on the keypad, it's just the shortcut, it gives me these tools up here that allow me to define what the mask is. Uh, this is gonna select triangles. This is gonna select polygons, so I can add it. This one is going to select by UV island. So you can see that it's selected that entire island, and then this one here will let me select the entire object, which is what we want, because that'll isolate the entire elevator. So now whenever we do any of our painting, the painting is not going to extend beyond the elevator. All right, so the base layer here, I just want to create kind of a fabric, kind of rough, slightly rough texture. So I select my fill layer, I'm going to call this base fabric, and I'm only interested in the height. So I'm going to Alt-click on height, and it's going to just isolate the height channel, and down here, I'm going to look for something called Blue Noise Fast, and I'm going to throw that into my height channel, and that's going to create this, this bump, which is clearly you know too strong. Uh, so we are going to go up here. Since we're in the height channel, I can take this and take it all the way down to 1, and it cuts it way back. It's still too much, though. I'd like to make it even more subtle, and unfortunately, I can't do like a 0.5 here. It just goes to 0. But what I can do is I can create another folder inside here. I'm going to call this Base Fabric 2. I'm going to stick my texture or my fill layer inside that, just click and drag it up there. And then here I can again reduce the amount of strength. So I'm gonna make this maybe 50%. You can see that that cut it back even further. In fact, maybe even 20%. I just want a subtle, a subtle difference in, in texture between the metal and the fabric. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna create those, the, the tape lines. I'm gonna do that with a paint layer so I'm going to create a layer, and this is all inside the elevators folder, so any of our paint's going to stay just on the elevators. And I want to go to, I'm going to hit the one on my keyboard just to make sure that I'm using a brush. And I want to choose a soft brush. So I can choose this basic soft brush, and that's just going to set my alphas and other settings for me. And I want to do just the height, so if I hold the Alt key and hit height, I just get the height. And now I want to throw that same blue soft, that blue noise texture into my height information. And now when I paint, I hit the left square bracket, I can change the size of my brush. So now when I paint with this brush, I'm going to be painting with that texture. So I'm just gonna go, first I'm gonna do the outline edges of it, where that frame would be, and then I'll do the vertical pieces. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't know what this black spot is. Just a missed place I missed, I guess. Okay. And I might even add just a little bit of a round corner here. And I can hit the 2 key to go into delete mode. And as long as my height is the same, so for example, I could put 
fill that in, hit two to go to delete. And if I want to kind of make like a fillet there, make it rounded as long as I'm in height mode. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to round these corners. Okay, so that's the basic shape that we want. Obviously, the effect is too strong here, so we want to cut it back quite a bit. Maybe two. Two is too much. 25. Still too much. 50. Want here 50? All right, so it's still strong, but I want to add a fill layer, or a filter rather, to this paint layer. And over here on the right, I want to add it just to the height channel. So Alt, click on the height button. And it's going to bring up this box, and you can type the word blur in here and choose blur. And that's going to let you blur your effect. I just want to blur it just a little bit, a little bit more. Maybe cut down on the overall strength even some more. I'm just trying to make that the, uh, give a suggestion, a hint that there's something going on down there. All right, we'll try that. And very often with bump maps, we'll probably have to put it into Blender and then adjust it and see what it looks like in Blender. And it's still got a two, make it bigger, a bigger blur. Again, just subtle. And the last thing I want to do, let's call this tape. And the last thing I want to do is I want to create the stitching, which is the kind of the sharper raised centers. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm in one for my brush and I want to change my height from this noise fast to, uh, what's it called? Roller, I think it's here. Yeah, stitches roller. I'm gonna put that into my height here. And I wanna set my parameters so that I've got uh, like 90 degrees, I guess, and maybe 0.25, see what that looks like. And you know, I'm just working in height again. So if I click here and, right, too strong, then too big. So let's try 0.15. I'm just trying to create that raised line of stitching that goes down the middle. So I'm clicking outside there, you know, it's going to be hard to evaluate when it's that strong. So let's take it down to like five and try again. Just click outside, hold shift, control shift, click up. All right, that's better. And we can adjust the strength. I'm just going to go right along here on all the seams. Now the seams don't go all the way to the edges. So now I want to hit my two key to go into erase mode. I'm in height mode, and I want to make this, this a soft brush, and I'm just going to kind of just tap the edges to try to get them to fade out along the leading and trailing edges, because the, the stitching only really seems to appear mostly kind of toward the middle. And we'll also use a blur and maybe adjust the height. All right, they're still too strong, so I'll take them back. I don't want to lose too much of the detail, but I think I do want to add, or at least try to add a, not a level, sorry, add a filter. And then over here, height only, hit the blur, and even, even 0.5 is too much. So 0.2, maybe 0.4, and then it's going the wrong way. 0.1, I want them to be seen, 0.15. We'll probably have to adjust that once we're in Blender anyway, because like I said, bumps don't always come over. And I still think the underlying fabric bump is too much. So let's click on the base fabric, and I want to change it even more, maybe 10. All right, we'll try that. All right, so that's the technique I use for putting fabric on the control surfaces. And I'm going to use the same technique for the rudder and the ailerons. All right, I'm back. I've added ribbing to the rudder and finished up the elevators and I added the ribbing to the ailerons as well. I decided not to have a, a texture on the taping material so I just made that a smooth material because I didn't think it was uh, as accurate as having something smooth. And now it's time to export it out into uh, texture files and then import it into Blender and see how it renders. So we go to uh, File, Export Textures, and here we need to change some of our settings because up until now we've only been outputting the normals. So now we want to output height because the uh, all the stitching and ribs were done as a bump map, as a height map. And you'll get better results if you don't use 8-bit. So I like using 32-bit uh, TIFFs 
for my height map. Um, if you use something that's lower resolution, you're gonna get stepping and your bumps are gonna look kind of like jagged. So the higher the resolution, the better. And we can export that now. It's gonna go to the same file as the normal fa maps went to. Save our settings, save our file. All right, here we are back in Blender. And I will just isolate the parts we're looking at here. And I, well, we need to update our shader a bit. So duplicate that. Now we're gonna take in our height. So that's the first of the UDIMs and the height. I'm going to add that to a bump. So vector bump height, it's on non-color. And I'm just gonna stick that in there. And let's see what it looks like. It's probably gonna to be too strong. Probably have to dial it back a bit. So yes, clearly too much there. And let's take a look. Let's add a multiply in here. So converter, math, multiply. And we're just gonna cut back on the strength of the bump by cutting it down. Let's try 0.1, see what happens. Let's say it's still too strong. Maybe still a little too strong. Because it is, a, it's not a real prominent feature, but it is a, it is, it's supposed to be there, but it's supposed to be subtle. And by adding the multiply between here and the bump, between the texture and the bump, it means I can control the bump independently of the normal render, because we want to be able to control the normal maps, perhaps, um, independently of the bump. So that's how I do that. Let's take a look at the aileron. All right. So I'm going to say it looks okay for now. And as we get more paint and weathering on it, we'll see how it looks. The nice thing about this is it's it's kind of non-destructive. I can adjust either the strength or the detailing in Substance Painter and then bring it back into uh, Blender and you know adjust it there as well. So, you know, the way it catches the light here, it might be a little strong still. Because it really is just when there's a bleak light. All right, we'll keep it there. All right, so I think that's it for this lesson. Um, I'm not sure what the next one will be, but I'll put it in the cards, and I will see you there.